In this video, I'll show you how to create these minimalistic room cards with a unique layout. I use these in my dashboard together with bubble card pop-ups. As always, you can get the full code from the Gumroad link in the description. You will need to install Lovelace Layout Card and Button Card from Hacks. Start by creating a new card, then add the custom layout card. This card lets you create grid layouts, similar to the built-in grid card, but with layout card you can size the grid cells yourself and that way create interesting layouts. Set it to grid mode and add the following code into the layout options field. Grid template columns, grid template rows, and grid template areas. For some reason this field is acting strange, so it could be an idea to write this in a different program like Notepad and paste it in. For starters, I'm just gonna add some basic rules to the columns and rows. I'll create two equally sized columns and four rows. I set the rows to 70px for now, but this will change later. The areas are the actual cards that we will add to this layout so that layout card know what card to place where. Think of this as card IDs. Doesn't have to be very specific. In my own personal dashboard, I have just called these one, two, three, and so on. But for the sake of the video, I'll give them more descriptive names. And that's it for now for the layout. Let's start adding some cards. Head over to the cards tab and add a custom button card card. Give it an icon and a name. I'm also setting up a custom field called temp. We also have to add this special code that tells layout card where we want to place this card. This is that ID I was talking about earlier. You can see now that we've created the living room card and placed it into the layout using the grid. So now we can just copy this card and create a card for each room, remembering to update that view layout setting for each room, and of course the name and icon. I had to change the grid template rows sizing temporarily because the cards was placed on top of each other. And here you can see that we've created all our cards. It doesn't look very good, but we'll fix that. But first I want to do some edits to the layout. I'm adding one more row, then I'm copying the first row and pasting it below. If I now edit this kitchen into bathroom, the bathroom card and living room card will span across two rows. I can then edit the row sizing, and you can see that we can now sort of stagger the cards. Let's start styling the cards and make them prettier. I first just add a temporary number to our custom field. For this we will need to add styling for card, grid, icon, IMG cell, name and the custom field. Let's start with the grid styling. This will be similar to our layout card, but this time it's inside each individual card. So we are basically creating a grid layout inside a grid layout. We will have two columns and two rows. The grid template areas will be N, I for name and icon, and temp, temp for the temperature. For the card, I will just set some basic padding. But the important thing here is to set the height to 100%, and you can see that by doing that, it fills that gap in our layout. Next, the IMG cell. This is the wrapper that holds our icon. I use justify self and align self to position it. Then I set a width and height. This should move the icon up into the top right corner. I then add a green background and set the border radius to 100%. I've collected six colors I like from colorhunt.co. Then for the icon, I just set the width to 28px and the color to black. Next is the name. I once again position it with justify and align self. This moves it up to the left. I also add text align left. More on that later. Font size 16px, font weight 500, color black and padding 14px. The custom field will be similar to name, but I'm making the font size much bigger. I'm also adding line height. You can see that this custom field gets pushed to the bottom. That is because of the grid styling. The second row is set to min content and the first to one FR. This means the second row takes up as little space as possible and the first one uses what's left. If we now head over to our main layout, we can change the row sizing and you can see that the card follows. Let's jump into some JavaScript and make that static temperature into something that actually updates. We start by adding a vertical bar, then on the next line, add three square open and close brackets. We will set up two variables one for temperature and one for humidity. I will then grab the state of my temperature and humidity sensor. Later on, we can then just use the variable name instead of this long code. On the next line, we then type return and add two backticks. Google them if you can't find it on your keyboard. Inside, add a dollar sign and write temp inside curly brackets. Copy this and replace temp with hum. You can see that we now have the temperature and humidity sensors, but let's make it prettier. Add brackets around temp. Before the opening bracket, write parse float. Then after the closing bracket, add a dot and write to fixed brackets with zero inside. This removes the decimal numbers. You can replace zero with one if you prefer. 
Then remove humidity and add a degree sign. You could then just copy paste this code and replace temp with hum. I don't think humidity is as important as temperature, so I'm going to style it by placing a span tag around it. I can then change the font size, font weight, and opacity. This also creates a cool look, I think. And that's this room card done. Now I just select all the styling in the custom field and paste it onto the other room cards, making sure to edit the temperature and humidity sensors. We can then go back to the layout and update the row sizing so it looks good. Then I just update the colors of the icons so they are all different. Again, I go back into the layout to adjust the size of the rows. Then, my last trick. I first add a darker background color. I use a theme called rounded that comes with various color variables. Then I adjust the border radius on each corner of each card. I think this creates a really unique look. Here you can experiment with what corner that should be sharp on each room card. The number starts with the top left corner and goes around with the clock. And that's it for this video. This is what I currently use in my dashboard. Only difference is that I've added a tap action to open a bubble card pop-up window. I have a tutorial about how to do that too. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and happy Easter.